ever been caught in a crisis? One of those moments when all the plans you had go straight out the window, all because of some huge unexpected event. It's fair to say that unplanned events can disrupt our lives and cause us all sorts of trouble and strife. It could be a babysitter cancelling at the last minute on date night, an unexpected trip to the vet because your dog has swallowed a piece of Lego, or as I had recently, the cancellation of a train to get you to an important work meeting, which meant I had to frantically find another way to the client. Whatever it may be, I'm willing to bet that there is nothing you can do to prevent these unplanned events from occurring. The problem is when these unplanned events occur, we can't just down the proverbial tools, throw a strop and sit down in protest like a child would do. Oh no, we need to keep going and keep going in what feels like the face of adversity. Adversity won't feel sorry for us. It won't give us a break. It won't say, oh, because you've had a shit day, I'll let you off this time. Nope, sadly not. Rather, it is up to us to take charge and wrestle back control from this tyrant of unplanned chaos. But what can we do? How do we remain productive when everything is going wrong around us? This is indeed an excellent question and one I want to talk through today with you. So without further ado, let's dive in. Being able to stay productive when everything in life is changing is hard. Actually, scrap that. Staying on track when life throws you a curveball is just plain difficult. Staying productive in uncertain times is almost superhero-esque. The kind of skills a productivity superhero would have if they existed in the Marvel or DC universes. Hmm, I wonder if Kevin Fane needs to hear about Productivity Man. Anyway. The ability to stay productive in uncertain times is not a mythical power only held by fictional characters. It is something we can all learn. Yes, it will more than likely be difficult and may take time to master, but it is possible. To help you when the unplanned happens, here are my five tips to staying productive in a crisis. Number one, this may sound silly, but the way I see it is you have two choices. Accept that life is chaotic and a bit shit at times, but find a way to adapt ourselves to this ever-evolving world we live in. Or refuse to adapt and become miserable because life is hard and blame everyone else through the turmoil you're going through. And personally, I think it's a bit of a no-brainer. I would most definitely choose number one. I rediscovered this personally at the start of the pandemic in March 2020 because I was traveling to Vancouver in Canada with my mother, going to see my little brother, he had emigrated uh, three years earlier with his wife. We'd looked forward to the trip for months. I mean, carefully planning the itinerary, organizing transport and keeping our fingers crossed the snow gods would be kind to us. I wanted a really big dump of snow. It was late March and the term coronavirus had just started to infiltrate the news and everyday language. I mean, whilst not expecting it to cause such disruption, we left the UK full of the joys of a mini family reunion. However, as hindsight will so accurately show, this trip was about to be completely disrupted. After landing in Vancouver and staying at my brother's on the Thursday evening, we travelled up to Whistler on the Friday, checking into the Fairmont Hotel and getting ready for some skiing over the weekend. Unfortunately, Saturday greeted us with minus 15 degrees Celsius temperatures and even colder wind chills, so we politely declined heading out of the snow that day, opting for the more balmier conditions expected on Sunday. Being there for almost a week meant we had plenty of time to ski. However, this was as close as we got to skiing. Because on the Sunday, we awoke to the news that COVID-19 was spreading fast and the company that owned Whistler Mountain had taken the decision to close it. Completely. To everyone. Starting immediately. It's fair to say that the first few words through my head are not repeatable on here, so, to, so suffice it to say it was a bit of a shock. We inquired and queried what was happening, all returning to the same conclusion that skiing was just not happening this year. But we were so close. As this virus spread and the pandemic took hold, it quickly became apparent that we needed to get home in case the UK borders were closed. I mean, so four days after arriving in Canada, mum and I flew home to the UK, having touched the snow but not managed to ski. Now I know this is a privileged position and I am hugely thankful for being able to travel halfway around the world to North America and also see my brother and potentially go skiing, but it wasn't at all easy. All plans that had been drawn up had been thrown up into the air. Life was really rather chaotic for a few days. 
That's why accepting this and choosing a way to adapt will stand us in the best position. It's worth remembering that we have to make this choice every single day, as that's what will ultimately keep us going. It won't always be easy, but we can do it. I reckon you're also a number one choice person too, otherwise you simply wouldn't be watching this video. Remember, we got this. Virtual high five. Number two is all around staying focused on your tasks. Now, when something important interrupts our lives, it is easy to develop a tunnel vision, only focusing on that one thing. Now, focusing on one thing is hugely important, and I talk about how multitasking is killing your productivity here, but in this instance, that one thing can actually be detrimental to your overall goals. You see, before you know it, your whole life can be consumed by this one crisis. It becomes all-encompassing, but only if you let it. We can't allow ourselves to forget where we are going in life, what we are working towards, and our end goals even when everything is changing under our feet. It is easy to neglect everything and become obsessed with this one thing. But by neglecting our work, our family, our friends, and our health, this is simply not an option. Under any circumstances, I know that when taking on a new challenge, I can become very tunnel focused on the event. It takes precedence over social engagements, family events, and even spending time with my other half. Most of the time, she's reasonably understanding. But this isn't healthy. It is only a challenge at the end of the day, and even for me, it is the most important thing in my life at that point. I should not neglect everything else. Having focus is a positive thing, but neglecting everything else isn't. There is a fine line between dedication and obsession, focus and bloody mindedness, balanced lives and an all or nothing mentality. Treating it as a skill and even the best of us can get it wrong at times because being aware of it is the first step. That's why to stay focused and not give up on our ideals, it is important to remind ourselves of what we do, why we do it. No matter how hectic life becomes, we can always find 10 minutes to reflect. A quiet moment to take stock and answer these five simple questions. What are my values? What are my long-term goals? How can I improve myself? How can I help a loved one? How can I help someone at work? When training for my Ironman in Vichy, France, the program was 32 weeks long. It was a big endeavor with lots of early starts and late evenings. Jumping into the pool at 6 a.m. isn't my idea of fun, nor is running half marathons at 10 p.m. in the evening but my why was strong. I'd flirted with the idea of doing a 140.6, i.e. a full Ironman race, for a long, long time, but it wasn't until my middle brother was diagnosed with an aggressive form of bowel cancer that I decided to commit. When there is a very real danger that I might need to provide for his young family, well, that's the burden I would want to take on. Any amount of pain I went through in training was nothing compared to what he was going through. We are incredibly lucky that he's made a full recovery and count it as a small miracle, but it reinforces to me that every single day that a strong why is what keeps us going even when we don't want to. Number three is short bursts of work. It's embarrassing to say, but it wasn't until attending the part-time YouTube Academy course with Ali Abdul that I first became aware of the Pomodoro technique. The productivity king himself says that this method helps him stay focused and productive. So there must be something worth following. Learning more about it, there is a really big reason as to why it's so famous, and that is because it works. Being able to switch on and switch off at the right time will help reduce distractions and improve the chances of success. This is especially important when navigating a crisis. The level of distractions rises almost exponentially and it is easy to get sucked into the vortex of distraction and procrastination. Don't let that be you. It's strange how I have a huge fascination with cleaning the kitchen when it's time to study for an exam or the bedroom gets tidied when an essay is due. The want to avoid and procrastinate is heightened when unplanned things happen and this is even more true in a crisis. So I've installed a Pomodoro app on my computer. This allows me to stay focused and I know that I can go great guns until the sound inform is that I've done my 25 minutes. Having the right background noise or no noise at all, if that's your flavor, is also key. I'm a huge fan of Ludvico Einaudi, so we'll always start with Igorni or one of his other amazing albums. It sets the tone of calmness and means that I can dial into the task ahead. But remember, the Pomodoro technique works best when you're focused on only one task. 
It doesn't lend itself to multitasking, so don't. Focus hard for 25 minutes, then have five minutes break. Do this four times before having a 20 minute gap. I think you'll be surprised at what you can accomplish using this even when in the middle of a crisis. Number four, have an energy boost. We all know that life can be demanding, so giving ourselves any sort of an advantage is only going to feel like a win. That's why focusing on your physical and mental energy is vitally important. Having the energy to deal with what life throws at you will, in my opinion, determine if you succeed or fail. But how do we make sure that we have the right level of energy to deal with life? Well, the honest answer is to keep it simple. Firstly, eating a healthy and balanced diet. Have plenty of vegetables, eat the rainbow, have everything in moderation. Sleep for seven to nine hours a night. Easier said than done, I know, especially if on shift work, but sleep is the biggest factor in fitness recovery and contributes massively to positive mental health. Get at least 30 minutes of exercise in every day. This means raising your heart rate, perhaps getting a sweat on, but at least getting the blood pumping. None of this is rocket science, fortunately, but there is a big, big difference between knowing and doing. These foundation elements will provide a fantastic platform for dealing with life. But please don't get carried away on fad diets and crazy fitness regimes. Yes, they may help and that's great, but it's doing the world-class basics that really matters. I talked about this in a recent light bulb moment, which is my Sunday Knowledge Bomb newsletter, and I'll put a link in the description below if you want to know more about Ian McGeekin's view on achieving excellence. Definitely check it out. But please stick to these foundational elements, even if the crazy workout and fad diets don't last. Number five, reduce decisions required. This relates to making life easier for ourselves, which is even more pertinent when in a crisis or going through a period of instability. The aim is to reduce the number of decisions we need to make each day. It's the reasons why Steve Jobs used to wear the black polo neck and jeans combo and why Barack Obama, when in office, only wore a gray or black suit. It was all with the aim of reducing decision making. We only have brain capacity for a finite number of decisions in a day, so removing the little ones which can detract us from the bigger ticket decisions is a sensible way to go. You may not think it's that important or have much of an impact, but I would say just try it. The next time you fancy going for a run, just put your trainers and your running gear out ready for you. Or if you want to stop snacking on biscuits, buy some fruit or some healthy alternatives and not the chocolate hobnobs. Not having the temptation because you don't have any will automatically improve the chances of not eating them. But then again, who doesn't love a cup of English breakfast tea and a chocky bicky? I have got into the habit of putting my clothes out for the gym the night before. It means I don't have to think about what I will wear in the morning when I'm half asleep, it's cold, and I'm trying not to wake my other half. It is one less decision I need to make in the morning. It is all a way of reducing friction, which is just simply a fancy way of saying excuses that would prevent me from going to the gym. I do the same with my breakfast each morning. I make proats, protein oats, the night before I'm put in the fridge so I can eat when I get home from the gym in the morning. It also means I can eat it whilst on a work call, which is harder if you haven't made it yet. When I was younger, I used to hate uncertainty. The act of not knowing what will happen used to put me into a bit of a tailspin, but not anymore. By learning how to embrace uncertainty, it allows us to find solutions to situations which would have previously completely derailed us. It may be associated with growing up, but there is no such thing as safety. Safe jobs don't exist. They just cause us to become lazy and weak, or even worse, stuck in our comfort zone. But by using these tips, we can become more resilient and bring in solutions to challenges and embrace what life's chaotic nature has to throw at us. And that's it. Being able to stay productive and focused when all those around you are falling apart is a surefire way to achieve success. Having the confidence to keep going and embrace uncertainty will stand you in great stead for the future. With that in mind, I would highly recommend this video here where I talk about why multitasking is destroying your productivity. Have a watch as I think you'll find it really interesting. But with that, have a great day and I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers!